5 Tips for Flexible Molding Materials and Casting Materials In the world of creativity and art, mold making and casting have been popular for a long time. Artists use these to make amazingly perfect recreations of about anything that can be found, and even give shape to abstract designs. The things reproduced could be foods, ice sculptures, candles, soaps, toys, ornaments, standard figurines, or even the human anatomy. There are different materials and techniques to be found that can be used to make 3D replicas accurately and easily. Here are five secrets of materials used for flexible molding and casting. Number one, most materials have to be mixed with right water and in proper consistency. Alginate is available in the form of powder and has to be mixed with some water before being used. It is particularly essential for you to avoid the use of hard water. Otherwise, the alginate mix will come off as mostly inappropriate and lumpy in form. Materials like plaster and ceramic clay need to be combined with water. The amount of water that is to be used for mixing may differ on the basis of the consistency that is needed. It will have a direct impact on the amount of time that is needed to cure the material. Plaster bandages are soaked in water as well and squeezed prior to their application on the mold. The use of plaster impregnated bandages is especially necessary for reinforcing molds, which are unable to support themselves. At times, these are also used to shape molds straight away from the bodies of humans. Number 2. Molding materials are flexible, casting materials are rigid, but not always. Molds are generally composed of materials that are flexible, such as silicone rubber, polyurethane rubber, wax, alginate. Flexibility should in fact be an inherent quality for regular molds. It lets molds easily capture with accuracy all the important details of models, straight down to indentation or undercut. The flexibility also lets artists demold the cast easily, mainly through bending and popping the shapes out. Casts are, on the other hand, generally composed of materials which are set to firm shape. This is evident in case of metals, epoxy, polyurethane resin, gypsum cement, plaster. It is particularly essential given that the final casts would be showcased or used. These have to be capable of maintaining their shape without flopping or distorting in any way. But some materials may be used for making casts as well as molds, particularly rubbers such as latex rubber and silicone rubber. Number 3. Molding and casting needs different periods. Basically, the time for molding and casting is categorized into pot time. This is also referred to as working time, gel time, or pot life. It is the period you are supposed to work with the material once it is mixed and until it begins to set. After that time, the material will begin to be viscous and it cannot be properly applied. The time for working widely varies for varied material. Some of these might have to be used within a few minutes while others might give you around one hour window period. Thus, you must combine just as much amount of the base material with a hardener or catalyst as you may use comfortably within the specified timeline. For example, life casters combine small amount of alginate, possibly one pound at a time, given that it sets very fast. Cure time. It is the time taken by a material to set completely. This can be anywhere between a few hours to a few days. Typically, it is measured at a standard room temperature and may vary on the basis of the climatic and atmospheric conditions. A dehumidifier or hot air dryer may be used sometimes to speed up the cure time, as in case of plaster casting. Demold time The demold time might vary at times from the cure time. This indicates that the cast or mold has cured so much that it may be taken off the object without any distortion in shape you can use the mold or object freely again. Remember, however, that the cast or mold is only cured partly at this time. The cure time is more. You will need to wait for the mold to be cured properly to prevent fingerprints or smudges. Pot time and cure time are typically mentioned on the sides of product containers. You need to always follow them strictly, regardless of whether you are preparing plaster casting, silicone casts, or alginate molds. Number four you can speed up the cure time. Different measures are used by artists to accelerate or retard the cure time. Quick curing and delayed setting options are available for materials like silicone, plasters, or alginates. At time, the same effect can be achieved with magnesium oxide, talc, fillers, or fibers. 
Phase catalysts are also present for some materials such as silicone. You may add these to the silicone rubber to decrease the cure time a lot as much as one hour. You should take care given that adding excessive catalysts can make the material begin to cure prior to its application. The cure time may also be accelerated by techniques such as baking an oven, dehumidifier, hot air dryer. Plaster casts are baked frequently to lessen the cure time from one day to half a day. Number 5. Room temperature is taken as standard. Keep in mind that the cure time and pot time are typically measured at regular temperature or standard room temperature. It will obviously differ on the basis of climatic and atmospheric conditions that are existing at the time of curing or working. For example, cooler temperatures can raise the cure time and pot time, whereas warmer climate can reduce the cure time as well as working time. You can easily raise the cure time by freezing the material, catalyst as well as base, before using them for making molds. It can give you longer time to work with the molding material. For molding and casting products, visit Industrial Polymers at www.industrialpolymers.com.